100. We did it. Sheldon, we did it. 100 episodes. We're here. We're still getting along. Wait. Johnny Bananas got eliminated. Spoiler. <laughs> 100 episodes. So we're done now, right? Like, that's it? Yeah, that's right. We completed the set. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. 100th episode, and it's funny how it lined up, because obviously it's not planned at all, but... What an no. episode to be the 100th of the You Killed It podcast, because this was a legendary, legendary, legendary episode in my books. Anyways, I mean, first off, I was so tired. I promised last week. First off, I want to apologize because I did say in last week's podcast that I was going to live tweet the episode. I wasn't able to just because the schedule ended up juggling around, did a basketball podcast last night, Zion Williamson blew out a shoe last night like a lot of crazy stuff happened wasn't able to watch it last night but this morning wake up i'm literally half asleep when i turned on the episode john and now i'm so <laughs> hyped <laughs> now i'm like okay That's let's go let's go let's go what an episode the the challenge better than coffee um let's introduce ourselves i'm john shidley hill and once again for the hundredth time i'm sheldon alexander <laughs> Nicely done. And this is You Killed It, the podcast about the challenge. Um, as you might be able to tell from my, my extra sexy voice, I am sick. Um, but all the greats played hurt, Sheldon. <laughs> something like that. And I've heard that line. Something before. like that. That's because we've been friends for a while, and I say it all the time. Whenever I'm hungover, I say all the greats played hurt. Um, yeah, this was a fucking hype episode. This was great. This is, this is exactly what I want in my challenge episodes. You know what, too? Last week I saw someone tweeted, someone from the cast tweeted out an article that last week's episode of the challenge had like 1.5 million viewers in the States or something like that, which was their highest episode yes. since 2013, I think. But, yes, I mean, for them to come back like this and you know highly anticipated season obviously you're bringing in a lot of different viewers from a lot of different shows obviously the way that last season ended johnny banana is getting a new show in between like there's just a lot of hype leading into this season and for it to be living up to it this early is incredible because how mm -hmm. can you not be watching these first what two three episodes whatever it is and be like this is yeah i'm in totally in and again they went back to the classic that we talk about all the time right john the traditional episode where we see a great challenge we see some house drama and then we get an elimination at the end classic episode i'm here for it let's go you know you and i uh were talking once about television formatting mm -hmm. not not even on the air for <laughs> you killed it this is just the kind of conversations we have <laughs> And you said something very smart, and that is people like routine. Like, there's something to be said for having mm -hmm. a format to your show. Yep. And, like, you can play within that sandbox, but there's something about people having expectations and having them met that's satisfying as a viewer. Yeah. And I think that's why whenever there's, like, just a traditional format, as you said, of, like, competition house drama elimination that they're like it's comforting in its way mm -hmm. and it's it's like by all means there's still twists and turns like we still don't know how the competitions are going to go we still don't know who's going to get eliminated we still don't know what the house drama is going to look like heading into the episode yeah that's enough that's enough excitement yeah i it was, it was so good like i have i mean it's not even about the Johnny Bananas and Wes thing, which is a great throwback to obviously all challenge fans will appreciate that. But I feel like the new additions have been really good as well. Like Maddie, I think, had a really good episode just in terms of like she just seems like a good addition to the cast. Do you know what I mean? Like a good yeah. character on the show. Um, there's just a lot of things and a great challenge where you're seeing people like that mud challenge. Like That was a fight. That was a good, good uh, a challenge right and that's what makes this show so good i was saying it to because uh a mutual friend of ours uh danny black we were talking about it yesterday i was telling him i was like hey we're gonna do the hundredth episode tomorrow and uh one of the other guys we work with was like what is that show like i've never even heard of it 
and I gave him the elevator pitch I give everybody, right? I'm like, <laughs> it's a cross between, you know, Big Brother, Survivor, and Jersey Shore all mixed into one, right? And yeah. you get all of that. We got all of that in this episode, and it, it it's great. It's great. Uh, shout out to Danny Black. Yes, um, huge shouts to Danny but- Black. Love DB. Uh, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's start from the top. Um, <laughs> Let's. In the, very, in the very intro, in the previously on the challenge, mm-hmm. Johnny, your man, Jonathan Bananas, says, I'm always swimming against the tide. Yep. And I just, I needed a pause right here. Isn't that his own fucking fault? In part, like, yes. Isn't this... Th- Isn't this the guy that talks mad shit constantly, stirs up any drama? Like, even if he's not involved in the drama, he's in there. You know, he, like, teases and, like, takes jabs at Wes all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I agree with him that obviously he's always going to have a target on his back, but at least, like, own the fact that you've got it coming. Like, to compare that to Ashley... Who was eliminated last week she knows that she pisses people off and she doesn't make any excuses for it and she doesn't play the victim this is true this is true and we'll get through it as we go through the episode but it just followed in line with what we were talking about last week because you actually predicted that you thought johnny bananas was going to be out at the end of this episode and i just uh-huh. thought that, and you're correct i'll give you that for sure <laughs> and i thought that it, i found it super weird because there was a lot of bananas in the first two episodes and that's a normal thing but i felt like they kind of went overboard and that's so when you said that i was like ah maybe this all makes sense but you're right that trend continued in this episode because he just continued to dig a hole deeper for himself but speaking of digging a hole huh Uh, Oh, see what I did there? See what I did there? Right? Or do we want to talk about any of that meaningless stuff off the beginning? I guess we can just, like, steamroll through. Hunter and Georgia, they get the relic for winning the elimination. The relic also means that you're safe for a week, which is a great twist, I think. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. I think Um, it just adds another layer of strategy, which is... Again, one of the reasons we both love the show, the strategy angle of it, trying to figure out all the twists and turns along the way. I'm here for it, for sure. I like it. Um, I think we should touch on the Kyle and Maddie um, and Kara drama. Was that all before the challenge? It was before the challenge. Wow. I feel like so much. Oh, you're right. It was so much happened that so much happened in that episode that I totally forgot. But yes. So, I, I, I so badly want to like Kara. Like, I think she's a nice person. Mm-hmm. Like, to use the Sheldon standard of, like, would I have a drink with this person? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think I would hang out with Kara. No problem. Okay. But all, all this relationship bullshit with Polly and Kyle, I am so sick of. And I hate how Kara is going around about her business. So Kyle and Maddie, who are partners? Hold on. Can I say something first before you get into that? I was thinking about – I was yes. literally just thinking and I apologize because I stopped listening to you for a second because I was thinking about would I hang out with Kara. Rude. And my answer is no <laughs> because I would just picture – you know if you're out with an annoying couple and they're like – yeah. holding hands and like way too cuddly and like kissing at the table and stuff and it's kind of like all right i get it you guys are dating cool you can go home and smash later on but right now we're like trying to like eat food <laughs> do you know what i mean like it's a yeah like i get it but sometimes it's a little too much do you, do you know what i'm saying yep. have you been in that situation before i feel like yep. that would be Kara, and i wouldn't want to hang out with her because of that that's just me but proceed that's fair Sorry. Uh, yeah i'm listening to you again. i should <laughs> I should say there's a caveat. I would want to hang out with Kara, but not anyone she's dating. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. And and I don't mean that like in a moment like, oh, I'm going to make my moves on Kara. I mean, <laughs> and believe me, my moves are fantastic. <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't, <laughs> I w- I wouldn't want to deal with exactly what you just described. Um. So Kyle and Maddie, who are partners? Yes. Uh, as you and I noted, he like had a quick little flirtatious line about having celebratory naked showers mm-hmm. on the last episode. Facts. 
They share a quick kiss in the kitchen. You know, you know as you do, kissing in the kitchen. And Cam, uh, like, sees it. It's like, oh, what just happened? And Zahida saw it as well. And Kyle goes off to, I don't know, put on more bandanas. And Maddie sits down with Cam and Zahida just, just to talk about how she's vibing. And, like, it's, you know, it's like a fun little moment. And fucking out of nowhere. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are we really going to skip over the fact? Because a strong episode from Killa Cam here. But the fact that oh, Maddie yeah. sits down to like tell her what's going on. And she's like, yeah, Kyle said, Kyle asked me where the ketchup was. And right away, Cam's like, wait, was it in your mouth? And I was like, hold oh. on a second here. How did Cam know that was a line? <laughs> right? Because Maddie's like, yeah, that's what happened. And then we kissed. And. I was like, how did Cam know that that was a line? Like, is that some sort of game that I'm unaware of? Because <laughs> I've never heard of that before. But I found it so weird that Maddie's like, yeah, he asked me where the ketchup was. And Cam right away, wait, was it in your mouth? Ha ha ha. Like, she knew. I was just like, okay, kill a Cam, man. Kill a Cam knows all. Sorry. Kill a Cam's just that fast. But yeah, then out of nowhere, Kara, like, tosses in a, like, careful about STDs. And just, like, immediately trying to blow up their spot. Yeah. A strong level of hate from Kara just jumping in. And again, shouts to Killa Cam, who just says, no, don't do that. Let her live her best life. Right? And yeah. Maddie even is saying, quit playing, like, relax. And Kara tries to, you know, she tries to walk it back by saying, no, no, no. I'm just saying be careful because nobody really likes Kyle and you got to watch out for him and blah, blah, blah. And I love Maddie's confessional. She's like, hey, I, I just made out with him. I'm not going to marry him or anything. Like, who cares? <laughs> right? <laughs> was it e was it even a makeout? Like, it seemed like it happened so fast that I'm not sure you could qualify as a makeout. Exactly, though. That's exactly and, the point. And also, it was so ridiculous. Also, Kara when she was speaking to Maddie, said, I don't know why you would do that. There's such better looking guys in the house. Ah, uh, straight. But then in confessional, yeah. in confessional, she said, um, I just wanted to let it, her know what a dirtball he is. Those aren't the same things. Because she's a hater. She's she is a It's such pure, unnecessary hate. Yeah. This from the woman who in the first episode was going around the house with her boyfriend, <laughs> pointing out all the places that they're going to fuck. And this is like, a person you want to hang out with, John? This is a person you want to hang out with? Well, <laughs> I should be okay as long as I don't make out with Kyle. As, as long as I don't try to help Kyle find ketchup, we should be fine. Hey, man, whatever you do on your own time, John, that's up to you, man. I'm, I'm not here to judge you, man. Whatever you do on your own time, my dude. <laughs> The the other thing that we have to point out is that Zach says he's not ready to compete because he's upset about the Amanda Jenna Bumble situation from last episode. Yes, we all that, that's a little Pavlov's gun well, for you. There, so bud. was the fact that you had the Johnny Banana scene where he was talking about the teams he feels comfortable working with, and he said yes. Leroy's team, Zach's team, CT's team, and Kyle's team, which also. Yeah. Leads us to what happens later on in the episode. That is a tease. Dun, dun, dun. There's also some like Brits making out or some talk about someone licking ass yeah. or a couple licking ass or some shit. Uh, I don't know. That, some British that shit. Was, <laughs> that was Bear in Georgia. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he says that he finds her attractive because she is the most British. <laughs> which. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I. It wasn't it wasn't it Bear who also said this is how we do in London? I'm pretty sure it I'm was, yeah. I'm beginning to wonder what Bear thinks the national character of the United Kingdom is. <laughs> like he seems very confused. He seems like an by... interesting dude, man. A very interesting dude. That's I think too kind of you. <laughs> um So oh. the competition is called Search and Destroy. Yes, it is. Uh, it is four rounds. Uh, it begins with the men running through what TJ described as a gravestone, a graveyard of stones. A stone which I don't graveyard, think a, John. A stone graveyard. Sorry, my bad. Here to help. Here to I don't help. Think that's a, I don't think that's a thing, but sure. 
So the men have to run through, find a ball, bring it back to their partners, and then the women have to carry it through a mud pit. Of course, other women can either stop them, hold them up, or take their ball from them. There's only 12 balls to start with 15 teams, so three teams get eliminated. Reverse, where the women are running through the grave of the stone graveyard, and then handing off to men, and again, every time, three balls are removed until you're down to three winners who form the tribunal. Are we all clear? Very clear. I Right away, I was like, this is going to be fun. And right away as well, looking at it, I thought the strategy should be people teaming up, but I didn't really see yeah. much of a strategy at all. It seemed like in every round, it seemed like there were certain people that were just walking through who might have seemed like people that you could take a ball from, right? Like it seemed like yeah. a risky proposition to let other teams win, right? Well, I think I think we saw the um, the strategy pretty early on mm-hmm. when uh, Bananas ha- handed off the ball to Morgan. Mm-hmm. And she immediately got squared up by Cam and Ninja Natalie. <laughs> like that was. Well, I want. That was. There's some things I wrote down here, John, just about because I love the this actual challenge. So there's some things about the oh, challenge so I actually good. wrote down. Do you want to like kind of go through? Just follow me here. Stop me anywhere you want to jump in. But all right, I wrote, I wrote down some notes. Just can't lie. Turbo and Gus get the. So I thought this challenge was laid off the front end, right? Like oh. Yeah. Immediately, I'm extremely hype about it. It just looked so good. So, first off, Turbo and Gus get the ball first, and they get it to Nani and Jenny or Jenna. Sorry, pardon me. Apologize, Jenna. Um, and they skip across <laughs> to the finish line. And then you see Zach and Josh. They give it to their two partners, but they get tackled. Morgan got it the absolute worst, right? As you just mentioned. Yeah. While Cam and Ninja and Ninja Natalie, and I gotta say. You know, my my blip last week, <laughs> someone messaged me. They're like, stop mixing up Ninja Natalie and D. You got to know who people are. I'm like, I apologize. Sorry. That was that was my girl uh, Jojo that called us out. Ooh, called me out. I'm the one that was messing it up. I, I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, but you're right. But we're in this together. We're a team. Your mistakes are my mistakes. <laughs> my victories are your victories. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's like we're a team competing in this challenge or something, right? But That's right. Poor little Morgan just gets decked, right? <laughs> <And> <laughs> right there. You're right. That's when things got real. And it was funny because Davon quietly had another solid episode because great confessionals, oh, yeah. great just like – her on the sidelines like she's not involved in any of the drama but she's like on the sidelines and her appearances were still strong so while morgan's getting just trampled davon's like i could walk across and i could just be like miss america like waving the people <laughs> that's how <laughs> easy it was for her right meanwhile you know same thing goes for julia but people are fighting so here's a genius right i know people think that just because Wes is a friend of the show. Wes has been on the podcast a couple times. People think that, you know, when we're bigging up Wes, we're doing it because of that relationship. But let me tell you something, okay? This episode was a master class in terms of why Wes is Wes, okay? He realized there's no more balls. He comes back and tells his partner, listen, it's time to beat these bitches up. (laughs) Yeah. That was so smart. <laughs> so good. And then poor Shailene gets a ball from Leroy, and Wes just is there like a coach on the sidelines. Like, I got flashbacks. Well, actually, I was going to say flashbacks from high school football and the coach being like, get him. But I don't really want to shout that out because I don't know how that goes over in 2019. But Wes, <laughs> sorry, I'm having a moment right now. I'm overtired and giddy in case you can't tell. No, I love I it. I apologize. I love it. But I love how Wes was coaching from the sidelines and, you know, Leroy gives Shailene the ball and Wes is just like, you're taking that ball. You're taking that ball. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. To to counter that, Leroy just says, Shailene, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I that was amazing. And great strategy by Wes to have the awareness, his awareness rating on Madden would have to be at least above 90, I would say, right? To realize the situation, oh, yeah. see what's going on, and know that 
his partner D can just take out Shaylee, right? That is your ball. What did you make of, of Wes's strategy there? It was so smart, recognizing, and I'm not sure to that point anyone had like ripped a ball away from anyone else. Yeah. But it was, was so a- smart. This is a this is a challenge, a competition where communication is important. And later on, like Wes, as you said, had a fantastic day. Um, one other thing that he did when like the rounds flipped and the men are in the pit, mm-hmm. he didn't um, stand in like the transition zone. Yeah, he stood in the mud pit towards the back end, which played a huge role a few times over where it, it panned out for him. We'll say it now. We'll talk about it now because it's going to come up on anyway. Yeah, yeah. As as sort of a tactic to try to get the ball passed. Um, or, I mean, maybe it was a brain fart. Who knows? Zach threw the ball forward, and it went to Wes. Yeah. Which was a big controversy. But, like, another time in a later round, Hunter just threw the ball over the mud pit to Wes. Yeah. Because they're allies. So, why the fuck not? And Hunter's safe, but obviously, it, right? Like, he doesn't need to win, so he just needs to make sure that his number one ally is safe. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. Genius. And another thing is that you saw it uh, later on. I think it was Polly, you know, got the ball, got a running start into the mud pit. Mm-hmm. And Bear tried to chase him and couldn't really catch him. Yeah. So where Wes was positioning himself deeper in where, he, like, the person's bogged down in the mud and you have a better chance of squaring them up, doing, like, a proper, like, shoulder to hips tackle. Yeah. That's that's the place to be, and like you're you like still a, have you're like a space. safety on the goal line or a linebacker on goal line defense, right? Exactly, exactly, and you still have enough space where if your partner's coming with the ball, they still have like a big sort of straightaway to cross. Mm-hmm. You can still get back through the mud pit. I also think that if you're not carrying the ball, you're allowed to just like step to the side and like walk around the mud pit. Oh, you get what I'm saying? Like, oh, I think that if you're just playing defense in the mud pit, I don't think you have to stay in the mud pit. Like, I think you can just like opt to walk around if you want to get back to the transition zone. It's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you you touched on it, right? The episode or the challenge, I guess, that Wes had was just incredible. And he drops the line. You know, he gleeful, gleefully was yelling, "Work smarter, not harder," <laughs> right? Yeah, wise words from my guy Wes, and I mean you—you you, you just said it. He couldn't find the ball, was smart enough to alert his partner, alert his partner, and hype her up at the same time by telling her it's time to knock these bitches out, <laughs> right? Then doesn't get a ball while in the pit, doesn't tackle anyone, yet manages to get a ball. <laughs> like, like how does he put pull this off? But then you remember, hey, it's one of those Wes could just be like. Check the resume, okay? I've been doing this yeah. on a challenge. People might not be familiar with his work, but go back. Check the archives. Wes always finds ways to manipulate other people and manipulate the game for his benefit and ex- extend. Like, will it always lead to him winning the challenge or winning a season? No, but he's definitely extending his run each and every season because of smart gameplay like this, right? Right. I would I would actually say though that in this episode mm-hmm. it wasn't him manipulating. I think that strategy. what he did was you, not even strategy. He united people in a common cause against Johnny Bananas. We, okay. And this is this is my point because like off the top when Johnny Bananas is like, "Oh, I'm always swimming against the current." You've also spent the past 10 years pissing everyone off. <laughs> and, like, he listed, Johnny Bananas listed CT as one of the, like, teams he trusts. And I'm sure that if he and CT had an agreement in place, like, for a vote, mm-hmm. the, CT would be, like, honest. But CT and Wes are also boys. Exactly. And CT handed a ball off to Wes. Like, CT found two balls, handed one to Wes... And it wasn't Wes's fault, but when CT handed the ball off to his partner, Julia, she got mugged, whereas Wes's partner, D, took the ball across the goal line. Yeah. Which got, helped Wes get into the tribunal. Yeah. So, like, this, this, like, and if you think of all the people who would vote against Bananas in that house, like, if it, let's say, 
it was a pure vote, I still think bananas would be going in. Hmm. Like, if every, like, if you look at, like, all the British people, all the Big Brother people, they don't owe Johnny Bananas shit. And, like, a lot of them severely dislike him. The reason why Wes and Hunter are allies is because Johnny Bananas pissed off a whole new generation of challengers while Wes wasn't even on the show. No, for sure. I was going to save this for later, but I think the key here, right? And, of course, Zach said he didn't do it on purpose. We don't know. We never really heard from CT to get, like, his take on everything that was really going down. But, to me, if you're one of the regular challenge castmates, you got to read the tea leaves and understand that the longer Johnny Bananas is there, you're an ally to him, whether you are or you or you aren't, right? Like, and that's a detriment to your game. So if you're Zach and you're in the game of Johnny Bananas, you're seen as, you know, one of his alliance members, which you are, but also that's a bigger target on your back because you're associated with Johnny Bananas. With him out of the picture, at least then you have a chance that you might be able to make a deal with someone else on the other side of the house, right? But as long as Johnny Bananas yeah. is still there, you have no chance in making any deals with any of the new people in the house because they're not going to trust you. I would also add, and we talk about this all the time, Johnny Bananas builds an alliance and then eventually he has to cut the fat from the alliance, mm -hmm. right? Yep. No, for sure. Totally agree. The, There's some other things who, just from this challenge that I want to bring up because I thought it was yeah. really good. And there some like interesting moments. Like I thought Killa Cam just like thriving in this. Like there was a moment where she oh, got yeah. the ball and it was her against four girls. And with confidence, she's just like, I could do this the exact whole way and drag all you guys to the end. And then she And then she did. <laughs> it's so good. What so what good. a G check. Like there are few other people in the challenge who can pull that off and be like, what four on one? I can do it. You're going to be tired. I'm not. Yeah. Watch me cross this line. Yeah. And she made the tribunal. Like, it's not just that she won that round. She made it all the damn way. Well, it was her. It and does her, help. Her partner, Ashley, was also Beast, which I think that's a nickname that's going to stick, right? Like, that was a uh, duo for this this challenge. Gorilla you know? Ashley. There was a point where, like, he had the ball. I was like, oh, yeah, this guy's not going to get stopped because he's... <laughs> Yes. It's not just that he is broader than he is tall, but like he's not tall. Like he has dude has a low center of gravity. Yeah. That is that makes you hard to stop. Low man gets the ball. For sure, um, that is a thing. Other other things I wanted to randomly bring up much in the same uh likeness, let's say, as Beast or Ashley was Turbo. Turbo didn't get yeah. too far in, but the when he did get through and he just like ran through dudes, <laughs> his accent where he just like, and I say in my sight, no motherfucker will catch your balls. Size is not important. Yeah. This is important. And points to his and he, like, <laughs> like This is incredible. <laughs> Shout out to Turbo. I'm here for Turbo. He just seems so hilarious to me. Like such a funny character that you don't want to mess with that dude. You don't. One thing I loved is, did you notice who did not even get muddy because so few people touched him? No. CT. Oh, yeah. No one That's No one wants that smoke. <laughs> like, he just, like, walked across. Um. No, because, like, no offense to CT. Obviously one of the greatest challengers of all time. He's, he's dad bodying hard. Oh, he yeah. He has quite the gut. Yep. And even still, though, he's like a sumo wrestler. Like, he might not be the most svelte competitor, yep. but how do you stop him? He must be close to 300 pounds. For sure. No, he, he looks like he's a big, big boy. You know, like that post-wedding that post -wedding, uh, honeymoon, maybe? He's still enjoying the honeymoon? I don't know. But, yeah, yep. I wrote down. I'm like, yeah, CT does look a little bit out of shape. No? Interesting. Um, <laughs> but I thought this was a great battle, man. And on both sides, it was, it was so really good. Because even, like, on the girls' side or on the women's side, part of me, you know, Georgia still showing. Like, on the last challenge, she talked about how she didn't like anything to do with physical contact. You know, like, she didn't like physical sports or whatever. And in this one, which is a blatant physical contact sport, she was right in there <laughs> mixing it up. You know, D was fighting through people. It was just really, really good. And 
how it came down to the very end, you mentioned it, Hunter passing the ball up to Wes, great strategy by Wes, mastermind <laughs> by Wes, right? Um, mm-hmm. I thought that was really good. Uh, I didn't really understand. Okay. Here's my thing. There was one part okay. where Gus got the ball, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Gus tried to, like, he gets tackled by Ashley, which sucks for sure. But <laughs> my guy then decides that his strategy is going to be to throw the ball up and try to fight past Ashley to then get the ball back. Yeah. <laughs> and all he did was throw the ball up for someone else to get it. Polly ended up getting it, and Polly crossed the line, which I thought was funny. And uh, Polly also ends up being one of the teams to win, also at getting into the tribunal, right? And mm-hmm. I thought, honestly, I thought at the end of the day, I was even more entertained. Like, when I saw the challenge, I had high expectations. Then watching how the actual challenge played out, it lived up to the hype. It was still as good. I thought it was as as I thought it was better than I anticipated. And watching it play out the way that it did, the winners, you like the part where they had the slow mo of Kyle yelling, "Kill each other!" <laughs> <laughs> it was just all around so funny. Such a good, great, great challenge. And who ended up winning? It ended up being who? Cam and Ashley, right? Polly, yeah. Polly and Ninja, and then Wes and D ended up being the the teams to be the tribunal. And it's very apparent early that Wes's plan is to take out bananas. Which led me to this yeah. question for you, right? Mm-hmm. We talked about it a bit. You do you agree with Zach and CT, whether directly or indirectly helping Wes? fully knowing that Wes's plan was going to be to take out Johnny Bananas. And this is I, before we get to like the actual elimination round, but I'm saying they know that if Wes is in the tribunal, they have to know that Wes is going to be pushing to get out Johnny Bananas. So if you're CT yeah. and Zach, are you do you think that's a good plan for them? We kind of touched on it a little, but I want your take. Like if I you do. were them, what would you do? Well, first of all, I think it's a good plan for CT. Okay. Because, as I was saying, you know, he, Johnny Bananas, he forms these alliances, but at the end of the day, only three or four teams can run the final. Okay. And I don't think CT would be one of those four teams. I got Like, you. I think at this stage, Johnny is closer, well, not by the end of the episode, but closer with Zach, certainly with Leroy, and probably with Kara. No, I got you. So, so I don't think CT can bank on that. I think CT's best bet lies with Wes. Hmm. Okay. I also I also think that Zach made a genuine mistake. Like I don't think Zach was thinking. I think he was upset. His head wasn't in the game. I think he saw a familiar face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just passed the ball up. You're right. I think he saw a familiar face and it was like, oh, I'm going to help this familiar face and didn't really calculate it all the way through that, oh, by helping Wes, I'm screwing Johnny. Like, I don't think he did that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think he he put all those pieces together. I think he was just trying to help Wes. And I, I gather from watching the show and also from when we last had Wes on Mm -hmm. that he, that Zach and Wes get along, Yeah, that there's no issues with each other. No, Zach has said. So it would be. He said during this episode, right? Like he always feels like he's caught in the middle of the drama between Bananas and Wes because he's friends with both of them, genuinely. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you see your friend, you're being like manhandled by a dude, and you think, "Oh, I'll just pass the ball." Yeah, I get it. Like in the heat of the moment, you're tired, you're upset. You know, you just had. Maybe the night, but the night before, you had Amanda coming at you, rocking the boat with the girl you love. Like, I get it. Yeah, a lot going on. Definitely a lot going on. But as mentioned, great challenge. And as we mentioned, we mentioned who the the tribunal would be. And right away, you could tell. Wes makes it clear he wants bananas out. We know Polly's going to want Kyle out. And then there was Cam and Ashley, and they kind of seem to be. The tiebreaker vote, like that's what I was thinking going in. Yeah. And so it was funny that they picked Josh and Amanda as their team. And at first I was kind of like, oh, okay. I, I was with Amanda's 
because her response was, how is it that I'm put up in this when there's not even an enemy of mine that's in the tribunal and we still get picked? And at first I was kind of like, no, I, I agree with her. But then Cam yeah. is quick to tell them, hey, is there going to be bad blood? Because you guys are just a burn vote. Like I'm telling you now, you guys are just a burn vote. Don't worry about it at all. I just didn't want to side with you know, either side, whether it's Kyle or going at bananas. So I just use you guys as a burn vote. And that to me should have been the sign for Amanda to calm down, <laughs> but she didn't. And we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Right. Yeah. Um, um, what, one thing I got to say about the tribunal mm -hmm. when they do the like little courtroom thing where they're looking down on them. Yep. Johnny bananas was so salty and it was <laughs> such a bad look. But he brought up a good point. I thought it was a good question, right? Like, you're right. He was super salty. Maybe he could have worded it differently. But I thought at the crux of what he was saying, he's asking Wes. He's like, so, Wes, is this serious or is this a joke? Because it's a little early even for you to take a shot like this. Like, is this serious? I thought the point that he was making was a good point to ask. I just don't know if he handled it in the right way. Because he was a really a little too salty. And, hey, maybe it didn't matter because Wes's mind was already made up. But I'm asking you, do you think it was too early for Wes to take the shot? No. You got to shoot your shot. Okay. Okay. And, and like, obviously you best not miss. But here's, <laughs> Shouts here's the thing. Thank you. Um, but here's the thing. Johnny Bananas... His strategy is always long-term thinking, right? Like, he pits people against each other mm -hmm. until his alliance has the vast majority of votes or chances at the tribunal or whatever. So if Wes wants to break Johnny Banana's strategy, which he obviously does, he's got to get out members of Johnny Banana's alliance as soon as possible. Yeah, that's fair. Right? Like, that's why Hunter was talking about calling out Leroy last episode. Because yep. Leroy is Johnny Bananas, ride or die. So if you have your chance, do it. And also, we talk about this all the time. But a, a key strategy in the challenge is don't piss anyone off, right? <laughs> yeah. Wes isn't pissing off anyone that he hasn't already pissed off. For sure. Right? Like It's not like he just turned an ally against himself. He got rid of... he nominated someone who already hates him and tells him on a nearly daily basis that he hates him. <laughs> so this is like, and this is what kills me. Like, I think honestly, I think part of the reason why Johnny was so salty was because he didn't nominate Wes First. last episode when he had the chance. Ah, yeah, exactly. And now you might be hitting on something there. Now you might be hitting be on something. Yeah, totally. Beca because like, it's so obvious to everyone in the house, Bananas and Wes are going to go at each other until one of them's gone. And the same with Polly and Kyle. So just let them do it. Like, just stand back and let them go at each other's throats. Like, what's, what is, what's the, like, con of doing that? How does that hurt you? It doesn't. And Bananas is so salty that I think it only hurt his case. Hmm. Right? Yeah. Like not that he not that he would have been able to swing Wes, obviously, but maybe he could have swung Polly. But e and... either way it didn't help. Right? Like no, there's no it didn't way help. It the other thing that I thought was interesting was in that tribunal room, like the little court, I guess. We need to come up with a name for it. Uh Polly and Kyle have the most civilized conversation I've ever seen them have. <laughs> well, it's because Where, their act is all fake tough guy. That's why. That's true. They're both, they are both paper gangsters. But I like that Kyle was like, listen, I'm not interested in Kara. You have her. Have her. I just leave me alone. Like, I don't care. Um, and then outside after like it's all said and done and they have and like cam reassures amanda that it's just a burn vote um drunk amanda has been swigging on that shane juice mm -hmm. and it's just full flipping out that she's been nominated yeah and it's saying that like if i go in i'm going down swinging sort of threatening cam which doesn't work because first of all cam ain't shook second of all cam can't be called in 
So just like settle down and Amanda and Josh have such a hilarious argument about who is more hated in the house. Well, a couple things here. A couple things here. I think it's important to specifically state Amanda's case here cuz Amanda says, "I'm just letting you know, but if I go in, I'm willing to stab a bitch." <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, if like, I don't know what's going to happen on the challenge. We try to guess what the producers are going to come up with next. But you know what? I'm going to guess. Pro- I'm going to guess that there's no not knives. a challenge that involves stabbing a bitch. I'm just no <laughs> knives, no shanks. <laughs> like what is happening right now? But Amanda was odd one in this episode. You're totally right. And I was waiting for this moment because it was teased in one of the trailers that we saw early on, right? A Josh and Amanda argument. And the moment I saw that, I couldn't wait to see it because I thought it would be so great for people like me who enjoy the like drama of the house. Like, you know, cause there's different people that like different aspects of the show. Right. And I like mm-hmm. all of the aspects, but I'm also here for the spiciness <laughs> <laughs> knowing Josh's resume <laughs> and knowing Josh's game and how he would anger people in the Big Brother house so hard by knowing that they're mad but talking to them in a calm way but trying to piss them off by making it seem like he's not trying to piss them off by being super calm. You know what I mean? And it's like super condescending. That worked for him. By in- gaslighting. Sorry? Sorry? Ga- he gaslights people. Exactly. That's his go. That's one of his go-to moves. He'll take it to the extremes, right? He'll either be like super loud or he'll be super quiet. But both ways, he's trying to annoy the shit out of whoever he's talking to. Problem is, the challenge house, people are more likely to tell you about yourself <laughs> than they are in the Big Brother house, right? Big Brother house, someone will probably just like go back to their room and cry. <laughs> Whereas Amanda <laughs> just takes another drink and she's like, bro, what are you talking about? <laughs> And I've discussed at length how much I'm always here for the condescending bro. (laughs) And Amanda (laughs) had a lot of those for Josh. I thought this conversation was so good. Watching their conversation blow up because Josh is pretending like he's trying to calm it down, right? Like he comes in trying to calm it down and he's telling her like, what are you doing? Like you're just arguing with people for no good reason. Like you're threatening people. And he's actually right. I, yeah, I have to say he's right. I have to I have to stand with Josh here because he's right. Like you're threatening people, and what purpose does that serve? <laughs> and yeah, what what happens next, John? Well, b- hold on. I I need to talk more about Amanda and Josh. Okay. I you're right. Josh is right. Now is the time to lay low. <laughs> like I was just saying, like Wes and Bananas are about to enter Mortal Kombat once again. Just let it happen. Yeah. Just keep your mouth shut. Be funny. Be light. You're good. Shouts to Amanda for just crushing gummy bears as they're arguing, because <laughs> I love gummy bears, especially when I'm drunk or high. Oh. And Amanda says in confessional that her drama is for a reason that it's a strategic purpose (laughs) and i am fascinated by this theory she says it's reverse psychology (laughs) which it's not reverse psychology would be like throw me in so that they don't throw you in (laughs) that's all you're doing amanda not if you throw me Um, in i'm gonna stab you like they know you're not gonna stab anybody (laughs) that's not reverse psychology that's aggressive psychology that's jailhouse psychology (laughs) Oh, man, it's so good. It's so good. So then then we have a scene where Bananas is sitting with, like, his dudes plus Hold on, Wes. hold on, hold on. We can't just over, we can't just skip over. Oh, do you know what? Never mind. Let's do it. Let's skip over it. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I'll take it back. Okay. Take it back. So, so Bananas is with his council of bros. Yep. Um, including Wes. Mm-hmm. And is basically confronting Zach and Wes to be like, how how long did you have this set up? <laughs> like, it's amazing that to me that he can't accept that it was an honest, genuine mistake. And he says, and I quote, that Wes has exposed his freckled ass. Excuse me, I went through puberty as I said that. Exposed his freckled ass. <laughs> but here's the thing. Who watches this show and doesn't know that Wes and Bananas are going to gun for each other? It's like, true. It's true. expose what? 
for people exposed who, the most famous rivalry in the show's history. Yeah, and for people who are unfamiliar, you might be new to the show. This might be your first like regular normal challenge season watching Wes because it's been a while. But these guys go yeah. at it all the time, and basically it's a chess match between who's going to shoot first. Normally, there's kind of some acknowledge it, acknowledgement that they're not going to go at each other too early because it's more important to get the rookies out. But as we've been telling you from the start of this season, the numbers have flipped. So there's not really time, right? Because bananas being your enemy is just adding on to the other side's numbers because they have the numbers over you, right? So yeah. you got to get rid of bananas when you can because you know what he's capable of. You don't know what the other Brits are capable of yet. So you can deal with that later on. But if you get the let, shot, let, me, let bananas out, right? Let me put it in perspective about how old this rivalry is. I always say this. Fresh Meat 2 is the beginning of the modern challenge. Okay. Like the challenge as we know it. That's Cara Maria and Laurel's debuts amongst others. And basically the plot line of that is Wes versus Johnny Banana's best friend Kenny all season and like the the entire season revolves around them basically picking off each other's allies okay. and like headed toward a major confrontation and it was so heated that it led to the first season of rivals strictly to make Kenny and Wes a team <laughs> yes and and their rivalry dates back like even before that but fresh meat too is like the pinnacle of that rivalry but the Johnny Bananas, Evan, and Kenny rivalry with Wes dates back before Fresh Meat 2. Fresh Meat 2 came out in 2010. Like This has been going on for more than a decade. So for Johnny Bananas to say, oh, you've exposed, exposed your freckled ass, like what your grand scheme is. No, he hasn't. Like the second Wes showed up on the show, Johnny should be like, oh, that guy's going to gun for me. Like, that's... Exactly. Everyone in the house knew it. Every viewer knew it. So, Johnny Bananas, nothing was exposed. No, for sure. But my question is, do you believe the fact that nothing was set up between Wes and Zach? Do you believe that? And also, why is CT yeah. getting a pass in all this? Like, CT's role, because it wasn't as egregious, or maybe Bananas doesn't even know about CT's role, but... I don't think but I don't think Bananas knew about CT. So, do you believe that the Zach, like, there was no plan, Zach wouldn't be in on a plan to get Bananas out? Do you believe that? I believe that. I'm I on think the it was fence. just an accident. I'm on the fence. I oh, lean more towards the fact that... A little conspiracy theory. I lean more towards the fact that Zach wouldn't do it. But uh, at the same time, Wes is that calculated that I could see Wes sitting down and just laying things on the table for Zach and letting him know that, hey, the odds are more in your favor if you roll with us and if you roll with bananas because blank, blank, and blank. Right. Like I, I could just see that, like if he sits down with them and says, hey, my team is strong. My partner is strong. I have Hunter with me. Hunter's partners with Georgia. Georgia's the link to the Brits. The numbers are better on our side if you roll with us as opposed to you rolling with Bananas and Leroy and Kyle, who's a flip flopper anyways. I could see Wes no. breaking that down and seeing it, but I can also see Zach kind of being like, you know, just confused in the moment. Like, I could actually see that happening. And he did seem like he felt bad. So I can see both ways. But I guess I'm leaning. The thing that has me on the fence is just the mastermind that Wes is. And I can see him laying out the game. And it, it's, it would be convincing. It would work on me. But this is Zach, who would rather go into a competition himself with Amanda last season. True, true. Than nominate his friends. That's a very good point. That's a very you make a good point. You know what, John? You just convinced me. Live good. on the I'm air. Glad. You just convinced me. That is a great point. Zach did show his, you know, his loyalty last season. You're right. And clearly mm -hmm. I would assume he has a better relationship with bananas than he does with Tony, or at least a longer relationship. So he's yeah. not gonna sewer that's I like that. You convinced me. You convinced me, John. Good job. Great conversation. Thank you. I'm in. I'm in. So on the killing floor, all three teams voted the same way that they nominated. Uh -huh. 
I love that Wes made a little speech a la bananas and even used the word degenerates and bananas is always describing people as degenerates. Yep. Or degens, as they would say on Letter Kenny. <laughs> um, I love that he did that. But then, because they're at a stalemate, TJ Lavin sort of just like threatens them, menaces them without saying what the consequences would be. Again, people wonder why we big up TJ Lavin so much. And it's because of moments like this. The way that he just like stared them down and asked them so seriously, like. You know, when you watch other shows, and I know my go-to for this is always The Bachelor because I just feel like that guy kind of comes off as a douche. Chris Harrison or whatever Chris his Harrison, name is. Yeah. Chris Harrison softer than 10-ply? Yeah, he just comes off like it just seems super contrived and like super cheesy when he's talking to them about like what's coming up next. TJ just seemed so sincere in his plea. Like, <laughs> are you guys sure? Like, no, I'm asking you. Are you sure you want to do this? And it just seemed like, oh, no, like, uh, am I sure? <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm sure anymore. And it kind of worked. What do you like? What would you have done in that moment? Because Killa Cam was like, uh, can anyone else change their vote? Like, what, uh, uh, she kind of looked shook. And to Amanda's credit, Amanda's confessional says, hey, if you're going to be Killa Cam, live up to the name. If you're the queen, make the big move. And I kind of agreed with Amanda because I Cam looked shook. But then her partner. I, sorry, I'll ask you first. What, what what would you have done? I think. I think Amanda's right mm -hmm. that kill a cam. Like, if it's a burn vote, like you've done the math, it's not going to pan out for you. But I think that what really looked bad was the salesmanship. Ah. I think Cam should have stayed just like stone faced and that gorilla Ashley changing his vote to bananas is the right call. Agreed. Cause because that way Cam doesn't lose face. Mm -hmm. Gorilla Ashley already has a strong UK alliance. And, and like bananas is just gonna be like, oh whatever, he's a greased up idiot and like forget about it, right? Like bananas is so bananas is so fixated on uh, Zach and Wes, Gorilla Ashley is not going to take any heat for it. So I think I have to give credit to Gorilla Ashley. He made the right choice. I totally like agree. He with you. he solved the situation best for everyone. I totally agree with you because you don't want to be the guinea pig to find out what happens if there's a tie. Because no. this is a game where there's no rules. It's not like in the NBA where they could say, you know what, you're allowed to travel, so do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Like there are written yeah. rules in actual sports. In the challenge, you just make up rules as they go along. So they could have literally just said, you know what, since you guys can't decide, you are the three teams that are going in this elimination round. <laughs> like anything is on the table. So I agree with them. Someone had to change their vote because you do not want to be the one to find out what happens when it's no. tied. Definitely not, right? So great move. And then there. the picks now. Speed, but flip that over, though, going from a great move to a terrible move. Yeah. Banana calls out Zach and Zahida. Which I didn't really understand, but his reasoning was he says one fake friend is worse than 10 enemies or 12 enemies, whatever. You get the point. But he basically is calling out Zach because he doesn't believe that Zach – he believes that Zach was in on this with Wes the entire time in this plot to get him out. So Bananas wants to exact some measure of revenge and try to take out Zach, which is a terrible idea, a terrible plan on multiple levels. But the most, the biggest reason is even if you win and you end up back in the house, you've just removed one of your allies, like for sure. Right. Like, yeah, if, if he picks whoever he deems to be a weak team up there, because, again, you can pick anyone except for the tribunal or Hunter's team because they won last week. Right. You can pick anybody you want. And if you pick one of the other teams, not only are you taking out one of your competition, but also now when you win and you go back in the house, guess what? You can make up with Zach <laughs> and now you have yeah. your alliance again. You can try to make up with Wes and maybe that can buy you a couple weeks. Well, it would buy you one week because you get the fucking whatever that thing's the called. The relic. The relic, right? Like it was just a dumb plan. Just, it was an emotional plan. And I, well, yeah, I said it was this, an emotional plan. 
I've said this before on this podcast, right? You're dealing with money here because, again, at the end of the day, as much as we joke around, this challenge is for money. And when in these matters, I always go back to my guy Kevin O'Leary on Dragon's Den, right? People always come mm-hmm. in with sob stories for our American friends. Dragon's Den is a Canadian version. Well, the original version was in the UK, right? Of Dragon's Den, mm-hmm. which then came to Canada, which now is in the States and is called Shark Tank, right? But Kevin O'Leary, I'm pretty yeah. sure he's on Shark Tank as well. And he always says they, when, people, he with, when people come in with their sob stories and they're like, oh, I put all my life savings into this. This has been my dream forever. And I just need to see it through. And they're like crying and they're like, I use my parents' life savings. I took out this loan. And he always sits there. And at the end, he stops and he says, your biggest problem is you're too emotional. The reason why I'm yeah. rich and why I'll continue to be rich is because my money has no emotions. <laughs> and I always thought that is correct. Johnny Bananas, his money was emotional. And this was an emotional decision. And yeah, that led to his demise. Yeah, it did. And like there's so many like I if I were in his shoes, I would have called out Amanda and Josh. Uh, jo- Josh. Yeah. There's no way that team would work together well in this situation. Also, Amanda's pretty smart, but did they say who was the one that had to climb the wall and who was the one that had to uh put the pieces no. up? No, it could have been either one. It could have been either one. Either way, I just think Josh would be a terrible partner to work with. Plus, their dynamic is already on the rocks. So you could easily see that turn into yelling. And they have the fewest allies in the house. Yes. So you're pissing off the fewest people, Mm -hmm. right? It's like how Davon and Jose last season kept getting nominated. Yeah. No, for sure. Right, because you're trying to piss off fewer people. So, like... And, like, what Bananas did was gutless. Ooh. Because <laughs> let's say let's say he, like, had taken out, or, like, now that he's taken out, it's only, like, sort of disrupting what um, the, what, like, the alliance I assume would have continued without him in Zach and Leroy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I assume Zach and Leroy and maybe Kara... Like, I think Zach and Kara get along. Yep. And Leroy and Kara get along. Like, think of someone other than yourself in your own sense of betrayal. Yeah. Which is also, like, everyone, even Wes, is saying to your face, swore on his mom and anything that's important, Zach just made a mistake. Like, come on, man, pull it together. I mean, everything you said about emotional money was absolutely right. Um, I also love this competition, though. Because I fucking love Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. <laughs> and that is essentially what this was. This was a great challenge. Map it out. And basic it's pretty straightforward, right? One person has to climb a massive wall that has a map, the other partner is handing them flags, and you gotta place the flags on the country on the map, right? Pretty simple. Yep. Um Yep. Heading in, did you get this like before it started, did you get the sense that bananas was gonna lose? Uh, well, I called it, so yes. So I just sensed it my in my thing, plums. My thing is, and apologies if I'm ruining this for people, spoiler alert, just hit that like fast forward 15 seconds button <laughs> if you're listening to this. But my thing was I remembered right away that in one of the trailers, there's Zahida and Ashley intensely making out multiple times. So in my mind, oh. I was like, oh, we haven't seen that yet. So there's no way that they lose. Oh, I totally missed that. Whereas I don't remember seeing that much of like Morgan or Bananas, really. No. Do you know what I mean? No. So I was kind of like, he, okay. You know that they would find a way to include Bananas, too. Like if he was still in the house. In the trailer, for sure. Like, he, Yeah, like he always finds a way to say something, to do something. You know... Uh, Jemmy always points out that he loses because of the curse, because he wow, screwed over Sarah. the curse. I forgot about the curse. The curse lives. So the curse, the curse, first two episodes, first two elimination episodes of the show, takes out the two people the curse applies to. Whoa. But I also, I also have to point out. Did Jemmy bring that up or no? No, she is too busy getting into it with Kara on Twitter. <laughs> but we'll touch on that in a second. Okay. 
I love it. I'm here for it. Um, but I also have to point out that in the past, Johnny Bananas, the curse always gets him, but it's always later on in the season. Mm -hmm. But he did not do his start of challenge toast. Yes, and I think that, that was up. always his counterbalance, hence his early exit. Um, I have to say, how fucking bad are these people at geography? Okay, so a couple things here. One, it appeared as if um, Bananas was having a tough time just climbing the wall in the first place, right? Yeah. That seemed to be difficult. Um, I told you he wasn't in the best shape of his life. Correct. You, you did say that. The other thing that was very interesting, and I'm going to tiptoe around how I say this, but I feel like there's a, a theory or a perception, right, that yes. people overseas are more familiar with their surroundings and the country surrounding them more so than we are here in North America, right? Right. I would I would extend that and say that there's only one country in North America that struggles with geography <laughs> and that our country is better people from our country across the board okay are better at geography fair enough but I'm gonna say that it was a clear benefit I feel like Zach being partnered with Zahida as opposed to bananas being partnered with Morgan and 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 I don't mean because you know, Bananas and Morgan are dumb. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I feel like it was more of an advantage for Zach having someone who was able to help him out with, like, where certain countries are. Someone who was smart enough to be like, Turbo, where's Turkey? <laughs> right? Well, you mean, like, when Zahida told Zach that he'd put the uh, Union flag on Spain <laughs> and that it was further north. You know, yes. the country that she lives in. <laughs> yes. Or when she helped him find Bangladesh, you know, the country she was born in. Exactly. And Zach said Bangladesh is near India, which isn't wrong. <laughs> it's just that Bangladesh borders India. That's yes. like saying Mexico is near the United States. It is near the United States. <laughs> it also borders the United States. Uh... And yeah, but okay. The turkey thing bothered me because turkey is super easy to find. Like, it's not, it's, that's not a rocket science country to find. Uh, a rocket science. And also, as, as someone pointed out on Twitter, I forget who, Johnny Bananas has been to, like, fucking half of these countries. He hosts a travel show. <laughs> is there any he chance Johnny been... Bananas threw this challenge? No, because he was so salty. Okay, just just checking. But just putting he, it out there, asking the question. He hosts a travel show, Sheldon. The challenge every season is in a different country. Hey, man, sometimes he you don't, you don't got to pay attention South when Africa. you're on the PJ, man. When you're on the PJ, you don't need to pay attention, man. Just take oh, off and man. touch down, man. Not paying attention to the places on the map, the stamps in the passport. <laughs> I'm oh, being an idiot. So I'm, I'm not being serious. By I know. Um, I know. But yeah, it ended I'll, up being pretty close. Bananas and Morgan got 15 right. Zach and Zahida got 18. Mind you, you know, of the 15, Bananas at the very end just threw a flag up there and it stuck, <laughs> which was super yeah. fluke. Um, but yeah, I, I like that challenge too. I thought that was a really good challenge. Like having the, I like, the, the mountain climbing wall. You know, adding that as a twist into having to do your geography homework, right? I thought that was a good I, twist. Great elimination round. I often judge competitions by whether I could do them or how well you and I would do them as a team because we'd be partners. Okay. And you and I would have crushed this competition. <laughs> okay, okay. We, we would have dominated... It, we would have gotten it like we would have been out of magnets. Were we, we in the same grade ten geography class? Uh, I don't think so. I had Mrs. Campbell. Hmm. Okay. I don't think so. I was trying to think, but like, I couldn't remember. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair I enough. I love flags and I love maps. <laughs> like this is so in my wheelhouse. But do you like rock climbing? I I love rock climbing. So this was like the challenge made for you. This was the elimination round made for you. 
Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't gonna name names, but you would definitely have been in charge of just handing the mat the flags over to me. Cool. Like that would have been in your role. Hey, I things. know my role, okay? If I gotta check into the game and just be Bruce Bowen and play solid defense and hit open threes, I'm here for you. I could do that. I can do that. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> But, yes, a great, great win for Zach and Zahida. They get to stay in the game. Johnny Bananas goes out, and he stated his legacy would be at stake if he goes home this early in the game. And I don't think it hurts his legacy. I mean, it's no. kind of like, and I'm going to make this sports comparison. You know, I love to do this. It's kind of like LeBron right now battling to make it into the playoffs and could be facing an early exit when you've made the NBA Finals the past, what, eight years in a row. But Bananas going home super early, it's terrible. But it's even worse, even worse, because it was self-inflicted. Like, it was so oh, dumb yeah. to pick Zach. And again, super emotional. But you could have picked anybody, anybody. It doesn't yeah. make sense why he made that move. It was super dumb. And Wes, shouts to Wes. He masterminded this whole thing. Great episode of The Challenge overall. Great twists. Great, like... How many things would you have not seen coming, right? You wouldn't have seen yeah. Zach getting picked. You wouldn't have seen Zach helping Wes like that so blatantly. I don't know. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really good. Uh, what was your line of the episode? Um, I want to ask you one one more question, though. Uh, okay. Do you think Bananas is done with the challenge? You mentioned he has no. his own travel show now. His stock's blowing up. His stock's at a high. They've introduced a lot of new characters this season. Will we see more of Johnny Bananas going forward, or do you think he's starting to fade and it, you know, we might be seeing the final countdown on Bananas on the challenge? No, I think he's too competitive. I think he wants to go out on a W. Okay. My follow-up question is – well, first off, I'll just say poor Morgan didn't know what she was getting into when she picked bananas or maybe thought she knew what she was getting into because I think that she thought partnering with bananas would be good for the brand, right? Yeah. Thought like the brand would be strong teaming up with bananas and it clearly backfired because it was more beef than even bananas realized that he had against him. But overall, do you think Morgan has a future on the challenge? you think she could come back and be a, a good – challenge competitor i hope so i think so too i hope so i mentioned too because I, I i only know morgan because i watched the season of x on the beach while i was off on uh vacation one of the week i had like a full just tv week and i ended up watching a couple episodes of x on the beach so i became more mm -hmm. familiar with morgan and i think that she would be a very good challenge person also i mentioned on the after show that they had after one of the episodes she was bringing all the smoke <laughs> on the after show she's a very good social media person as well so i think there is a future for her on the challenge i look forward to her being back again but yes sorry you asked about the line of the episode yeah and i don't have just one line and i kind of okay. touched on it before because it's more of a conversation because i watched the josh and amanda conversation maybe five times in a row <laughs> like I kept rewinding it back and then because I wanted to write down word for word what was going on so my lines of the episode goes to Amanda and it's because I've told you guys multiple times right I'm always here for the sarcastic bro <laughs> and Amanda was heavy on the sarcastic bros so Amanda says <laughs> first off she starts a conversation by saying to Josh bro I've done this game multiple times you don't know what this game is. You've won Big Brother. <laughs> Josh has a rebuttal. <laughs> Amanda follows that up with, bro, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Again, here for the sarcastic bro. Then says, don't act like you know what you're doing. Bro, I've been in this game longer than you. So at this point, Amanda's drunk logic kind of makes sense because Josh says, yeah. no one likes you. And she says, no one likes you either. To which Josh responds, yeah, because I'm associated with you. And Amanda's drunk logic is right here because she says, you know what? That doesn't matter. It's still true, <laughs> right? It's true. It doesn't matter why anybody, do, why people won't like Josh as well or they don't like Josh because he's associated with Amanda. The point is people won't like you <laughs> either, which I agree with. 
then she brought in the tinnergram or whatever the hell that was, which I totally forgot, and I found that to be like a weird callback. But she's like, "You couldn't even solve that. You were sent home already, so you're welcome, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> leaving Josh to have to break down the fact that you called me a bitch <laughs> you called me an idiot <laughs> and he just tried you called me a moron and in my books worst of all gave him the condescending bro multiple times and for that compiled with Davon just being a great audience enjoying every second of it those are my lines of the episode shouts to Amanda I'm here for a minute what I think my line of the episode. Ah, uh, see, I'm torn. Can can I just have two? Is that allowed? You can do whatever sure, you want. Sure, it's our show. Hey, it's much show. like on the challenge where the producers just make up the rules as they go along. Same rules apply on the podcast. You can do whatever you want. It, and it's our hundredth episode. Let's just celebrate by having two lines. Hey, um, the line of the episode. The first one we mentioned. We already mentioned both of them. The first one. When Cam was like, I can do this all day. And then like just bullied her way through four women to get the ball across the line. Yep. Love that. Love that confidence. All about it. Same at the same time. I loved Wes saying, play smart, not hard. Yeah. Because that's what our man Weston Bergman did in this episode. Just a tour de force. We haven't seen a tour de force uh, performance like that since Devin masterminded taking out Johnny Bananas himself Mm -hmm. two seasons ago. Uh, Which I think is obvious. I think it's obvious, but I have to ask, who killed it for you this week? Who killed it for me? It's obvious. It's Wes. Wes had a mastermind episode, top to bottom, orchestrated getting out his number one rival, succeeded, and he worked smarter, not harder, as you just said. To me, it's super easy and super fitting on our 100th episode of the You Killed It podcast, maybe our greatest friend of the show, or at least top two friend of the show, gets the MVP, you know, like gets a You Killed It award for killing it in this episode. Yeah. Um... I agree. It's it's unanimous. It just top to bottom had a great alliance. Did not endanger anyone in his alliance. Like didn't make things worse for anyone who supported him. Whether it's CT, arguably he made things. I you can't even say that he made things worse for Zach because I really think it was just an honest mistake on Zach's part that Wes capitalized on mm-hmm. and got rid of his greatest nemesis. Crippled, if you think about like the layout of the house, there's three major alliances. There's the UK, there's Big Brother, and there is the Johnny Bananas Alliance. And West doesn't really belong to any of them. But yeah. he just crippled one of those alliances. Hmm. Right? Like Zach is in an emotional tailspin. And Johnny Bananas, the ringleader, is out. And West gets along with Zach. Like there's Wes could easily bring Zach on side. So then you have Wes, Zach, CT. Um, maybe he could swing something with Leroy and Kara, who he hasn't been always the closest with, but like he can make things happen there. Mm-hmm. A- and he has Hunter, too. We forgot about Hunter. So like Wes is suddenly in great shape. So Wes definitely crushed it, killed it. Unanimous, our second unanimous week, and both people from the same alliance. Um, but we also want to take a moment for our hundredth episode to thank some people. Okay. Obviously, thank you to the fans. As we say from time to time, this just started because we were buddies that would see each other tweeting about the challenge and then became texting about the challenge. And then we decided to start doing a podcast. And like, I remember the first like 10 or 15 episodes we would have like 50 listeners and I would be thrilled with 50 listeners. <laughs> uh, the power has gone to my head and now if we don't crack a thousand, which we do every week, I'm disappointed. But it's so cool how this has grown. Um, a big part of that is to our active listeners who uh, comment and message us. Um, off the top of my head and I know I'm gonna leave some people out and my apologies 
Uh, obviously, LT, our guy Lawrence, um, JoJo, Rob Tenniswood. Um, help me out, Sheldon. I'm missing people. Who are some of our super fans? Erica Candice. Uh, <laughs> yes. Raven, uh, Raven Rochelle Ramsey. I remember the Twitter handle. I think it's like Blazer Fan or Blazer Girl. And I remember this because it now – um, because I also do a basketball podcast. I know she was brought to my timeline because of uh, the challenge, because I made a reference one time about uh, it being Lillard time. Or no, I think I said it was IT time, and she said, actually, Lillard did it first, and IT stole it from him. And that was where you know you get introduced to how interesting – the online world is right like here's someone who's listening to this podcast because we're talking about the challenge i make some dumb reference get it wrong about basketball but now you know we interact about basketball as well do you know what i mean and it, it's yeah. just like goes to show you how great like the world is because whatever it is that you're into you can find that you can find people talking about that and to me that's cool because one of the biggest things is i appreciate when people call us out for whatever's going on or what we get wrong or, you know, my trash takes when, what was I doing last year? Defending Johnny Bananas. There's at one point and, and uh, yeah. I was being accused of having trash takes. Like I enjoy that. I think that's fun. I like getting the different perspectives, seeing what other strategies the, the listeners have and when they point out to us and yeah, huge shout out to all the people on Twitter, shout out to the people in the Facebook group, shout out to the people on the Reddit group. Like, of course, the OGs on you mentioned the thousand listeners a week, and that's cool because it's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Like that's on the one platform of SoundCloud, right? The OG listeners, which we appreciate so much. That's cool, right? And it, it just, again, tip of the iceberg in terms of it's not even including YouTube or iTunes or whatever, but it's just cool how it's grown out of a place of authenticity, right? Because there's no goal yeah. with this. It's just fun. It's a show we like and I enjoy talking about it. And the perfect example to sum it all up is the fact that I'm so tired this morning, right? But I watch the yeah. challenge and it puts me in such a good mood and it's perfect to just talk about it and share the experience of watching it with people who also are as hype as I am watching the show. Because I don't know if you had the same experience, John, and stop me at any point if I'm going off on a tangent. But I don't know if you have. I the, love your the, tangents. I don't know if you have the same experience as I do sometimes, where because you, I have a bunch. You have different people that follow you for different reasons, right? So obviously, I have a yep. lot of people that follow me for sports takes or Raptors or whatever. And so when they see me always tweeting out stuff about the challenge, I'll have conversations sometimes when you can tell the person's being condescending when they're kind of like, "So what is the challenge? Like, what is this thing?" Right? And it's funny because like I'm used to, I've accepted, I'm embracing this era that is 2019 where everything is about a niche, right? Meaning yeah. that it doesn't matter that you don't like it, right? It's not for you. So you could listen and be like, wait, what is this podcast? Why are people talking about it, right? Like, why is it a thing? How are people listening to it? And that's cool because it's not for you, but the people that do rock with us that's really special and that's why we always make time to shout you guys out because that's what it's for that's what this era is right finding communities of people that share the same interest and the same interest that we have on this podcast obviously is a challenge because it is the best reality show there is it's so good and it's so much fun and that's why we wake up every morning once a week to talk about it and we've been doing it now for this the hundredth episode and it's because of the fans because you guys keep us going man you guys keep adding us and giving us content and sharing it with your friends and commenting and keeping that conversation going not just in the hour that we spend talking but going on for the entire week in our comments it's amazing it's so good so i'd like to say shout out to you guys as well for helping us out Sorry, tangent one of over. The, <laughs> no, not a tangent. One of the things you said that I really liked uh, was that sense of community. And I think one of the cool things is I think the challenge fandom can be really negative and mean. Like you see the challenge competitors getting lit up for their looks or if they put on weight or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and I think that we've fostered like a pretty healthy, positive thing. Like... I don't think 
Wes has teased us in the past about being super positive and Canadian all the time. <laughs> and even when we're mean, we're not that mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's reflected in our fans, too. Like, everyone's always, pretty much always super nice. There have been, like, a couple of, like, not even incidents, but a couple of ugly tweets here or there. But, like, 95% of the feedback we get is positive, and that's really nice. For sure. Um, scrolling through my Twitter mentions, I see more names of fans that I'd like to shout out. J.R. Williams, um, Shaboogies, I hope that's how you say it. <laughs> um, there's Roy Lee's intern, who has been shouting us out lately, which is super cool. Roy I don't Lee. know if it's actually... I don't know if it's actually any relation to Leroy or any associate of Leroy, but I think it's cool. Uh, Texas Alien, who thought it was hilarious when we started referencing Letterkenny. Uh, <laughs> honestly, there's too many fans to mention, but like we value you all. And for the, the record, thing- John, for the record... Uh, before you go yeah. on, I would just like to say my producering continues because I don't know if you know what just happened here or if the listeners know what's happened here, but I'll give you a peek behind the curtain. Yes, I did go on this extensive tangent, but I also knew that while I was going on this extensive tangent, that it would give you some time to scroll through your mentions and find more fans to salute. Always producering. Yes. The producer hat is always on. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That was a peek behind the curtain. <laughs> like like Monkish Teku and Tess Tweets, who also tweeted us last week. See, I just oh, and KB Hearts Lacks, who in addition to being a challenge fan, is a big lacrosse fan, just like me, and used to play lacrosse. Shout out to all the lacrossers out there. Hey, but I also I also want to say something that's been very very cool for you and I is that we've gone to interact with some of the actual competitors themselves. Yeah, so. A shout out, a special shout out to all of the challenge people who have retweeted us mm-hmm. or tweeted at us. That's Hunter, Davon, Tony, Leroy, Shane, Devin. At one point or another, they have all interacted with us, given us props, retweeted us. And a very special shout out to those competitors who've joined us on the show, mm-hmm. uh, who've come on for interviews. Jemmy, Sylvia, Casper Smart, which is still, I mean, our, I think our biggest coup <laughs> is just because it impresses people who don't watch the challenge. Yeah. And um, shouts to, and, well, and why we got that interview, too. Yeah. Well, one more thank you, uh, Emily, who mm-hmm. came on as well during the Champs vs. Uh, Star season. But then the two biggest shout outs for us. The two people that have really made us what we are, that have helped put this monster together, are Marie Rhoda yep. and Wes Bergman, because Wes found our podcast, uh, I think, around episode number 30, and, lo- and then went back and listened to every episode, loved everything that we had to say so much that he asked to come on to be interviewed. Yeah. And he and Marie have been our biggest supporters, uh, both uh, online and privately. They will retweet us even when they're not on the season. Yeah. Um, They have been so good and so kind to us. Uh, They've really inflated my ego when I get things right, which is nice. I need (laughs) that. It sustains me. Well, the... Uh, it's just been such a cool experience from top to bottom. Yeah, and for me, it just reaffirms the whole thing that at the end of the day, you're dealing with real people, right? And so yeah. we're not here to really crush people. We're not really here to rip people. Um, I was talking about it with a couple of friends yesterday. I mentioned Danny Black. One of the things I was saying to him that I think why we're successful is because other people that have done challenge pods before, it comes off a lot like, oh, man, look at that hot girl's tits. And it's like really like bro in that sense, right? And it goes like so yeah. far into tangents like that. And it's like, cool, I get it. I like boobs. I like girls too, right? Like I get it. But at the same time, I also appreciate, you know, how they put the show together, right? What are the producers thinking? What I love the challenges. And of course, I love the gameplay. Don't get me wrong. I also like the, the saltiness and the shade that gets thrown. I like all of those things. But like the mixture of all of that put together is this great show. And at the end of the day, you're dealing with people. And the coolest part of having these relationships now with people who are on the show is that it just further emphasizes that, right? Because we've always said, 
the people you like on the show, it's like, would you have a beer with that person? And getting to have conversations with these people in real life has further exemplified that fact, right? Like, they're just real people. Yeah. And it's just someone I'd sit down and have a beer with. So, yeah, huge shouts. I'll, I'll co-sign exactly what you just said. Who, huge shouts to Marie. Huge shouts to Wes as well. Thank you guys so much for rocking with us and appreciating what we're doing. And the continued success as the pod c- continues to go, as the challenge continues to go, man, because things are going well for the show. The challenge as a show as well, right? Salute to that as well. Yeah. I'm a, I don't, this could be wrong, and someone, by all means, call me out on this if I'm incorrect. But I also think we're now the longest running challenge podcast. I have no idea. I I have no idea. We I could totally be wrong. I think you just made that up. Uh maybe I did. I'm trying I'm desperately trying to fact check as I say that out loud, which is bad producering. This yeah, goes I've, to show why you're the T V producer and I'm the writer. Yeah, I have no idea. I also have no idea how you would even come up with that stat, <laughs> to be honest. I have no idea. To, to be really honest, I, I don't know. But at the end of the day, too, like that's kind of been we have a pretty different dynamic in the way that we look at it, I think. And I think that's what makes it work as well. Like I'm still kind of I catch myself every once in a while, like having to take a step back and be like, oh, OK. Like there's a lot of people messaging me right now about what happened in last night's episode or there's a lot of people that listen to us just talk about this show that we like. And like I don't I don't really like it doesn't it hasn't really set in for me. Right. So I have to remind myself every once in a while that what we're doing actually has has worked. Right. And like I think it's because that wasn't really the intention. Right. So to me, it's it's kind of like, you know, when you're saying stuff like that, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. But like all right (laughs) you know what i mean like i don't know if i'm making sense now but so i'll just stop talking but yeah end of the day shouts paul or thanks to everybody 100 episodes that's crazy i I don't know what i thought this was going to be when we started but i couldn't fathom being at 100 episodes so that's pretty cool okay no i was wrong we're not the longest running (laughs) did i talk for long enough to allow you to to search for it (laughs) yes (laughs) <laughs> so, but but we're up there, I will say. Yeah, so we are, th- of the ones that I could find, the ones that <laughs> That's a feature... terrible stat as well. <laughs> what? I know. Listen. Listen, you. Um, the Brain Candy and Challenge Mania, which are obviously done by uh, former cast members, they have more episodes. Um, and also there's a podcast that I will admit I've never heard of, but it's still going called Challenged, and they have slightly more episodes than us. So your stat was just terrible, by the way, is what you're saying. My stat was terrible. That's what I was saying. Way to go, man. Way to go. Thank you. (laughs) Way to end on a high note. Um, For those of you who I know are going to ask, we still have plans to celebrate our 100th episode. But what we've decided to do is we're going to do something in person, but at the end of the season, War of the Worlds. We're not quite sure what form that's going to take, and we have to work out the details, but there is going to be an in-person thing where people can meet us in person, hopefully not murder us, and uh, (laughs) have a good time just celebrating the challenge and celebrating... Uh, what we've accomplished with this podcast and plan to continue to accomplish with this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Uh, We got to like work out a lot of details and sort a lot of stuff out. But yeah, I mean, I think we got time because this season will take a while. But yeah. Um, Where can the people find you on social media? As always, you can find me on Twitter at Shell Alexander on Instagram at Sheldon Alexander and like and subscribe to the channel on YouTube as well as that community continues to grow lots of subscribers there Uh, we'll obviously have the challenge pod up there and also a lot of basketball content if you're into those sort of things like my girl blazer girl I think I hope I'm getting that Twitter handle right I could look it up right now but it would seem ingenuine for me to look it up right now and get it right but Yes. If you're into those sort of things, like and subscribe on YouTube as well. Sheldon Alexander. And 
Um, you can find me. I don't know why I blanked on my name. Uh, I'm sick, Sheldon. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at J. Chidley Hill. Um, I can tell you next week, off the top, I'm going to have a golf story on Monday. I'm covering the Leafs on Monday night. I'm covering the Raptors on Tuesday night. And I'm covering the Toronto Maple Leafs again on Wednesday night. So, dear listener, buckle up for all of that Twitter content because I'm going to have a busy week next week. Hey. And until, until next week, this was You Killed It. You Killed It.